So happy New Year's. I'm just now getting around to editing the video. And um, <clears throat> so it's going to be chopped up. I really don't have solid continuous footage through the whole thing. And what I want to do is go over basically what happened. Got up one morning and said, I'm off. I got a little bit of break here. I want to go out and float down the river. And doing so, um, I have to decide where, I, where it is I want to go. And it's like, I know this stretch of river that doesn't have um, hardly any boat traffic on it. And it's not, with it low like this, it's going to be hard because of the portages and everything. So I was like, if I put in here, I can go down the river, float the boat most of the way, paddle some of it, um, portage some of it, and it's going to be fine. It ain't too terribly far. It's a pretty good distance. But I'll catch all the pools on the way down. And the river low as it is, the fish aren't going to be able to go to so many places, only the deep pockets. So I said, it's going to be a pretty good fishing day. It's just going to be a, uh endurance thing. It's going to be a trip. So uh, I went down and... I knew it was a dist I knew it was some distance, so I spent more time traveling than I did fishing or recording anything. I get down to my goal, my goal spot, and I'll just go ahead and be upfront about it. My goal was to fish the a high side of Lake Minky in the Flat River. I don't normally tell where I'm at or what I'm doing, but um the way sedimentation works is muddy water comes downstream, uh comes down the river and pushes up and makes sandbars and and silt bars and things of that nature so it traps water in the river that doesn't make it to the lake and so there's actually a great big pool at the top of Lake Mickey before you actually get into the lake it's still in, considered the river and um, so that's where I wanted to fish uh, last year the year before last some in the summer I've caught a bunch of nice crappie and right now crappy cat catching crappie has been my thing so I wanted to go get some crappy I'm with the river as low as it is. Maybe I could hunt up some Roanoke bass or something. Just had to, you know, see what we got lucky with. So I come in from the top side and I got there and I was like, man, if I could just take out down here at the bridge, it'd be a whole lot easier. Well, I get there and the bank, the bank is real muddy because it's the bottom of the lake and it's soft and all that silt that we were talking about earlier had been deposited. Well, you have the silt and you have leaves and such that, uh, you know, as the leaves fall off the trees, they all wash down the river, they all get in there, and it is not anything substantial to stand, stand on. It is actually very, very soft. And it's actually pretty dangerous, I'd say. That's where it comes in to be the epic fail of 2021. So, I am, I am down there, I'm fishing, I'm catching fish, I'm doing good. I'm not doing exactly what I was hoping to do. I didn't catch the quality I was hoping to catch. I didn't catch the, the variety of species I was hoping to catch. But, you know, all in all, it's a good day. I'm catching fish. I'm out there. Beautiful day. I'm resting. I'm just soaking up life. Um, I found, uh, collectively, by the end of the day, I had found three three fishing poles, rods and reels. One of them, I think, is going to be pretty nice once I wash all the mud off of it. But, um, yeah, so... I wouldn't say it was a disaster by no means on that on that level. The fishing was great. It wasn't like epic fishing trip, but, um, you know, I don't know. I took a bunch of pictures of some fish that, that, to me, had effect. Whether it was the bait I caught them on for use in later posts or videos or something like that, or just the species, you know, yellow perch are fun to catch. Not everybody catches a bunch of them. When you do catch them, they fight pretty good. Um, they feed in packs. If you've never seen them in, in clear water, if you get one on, you'll have four or five of them swimming around it and the bait as you're reeling it in. So that's always fun to watch, especially in clear water with polarized glasses. It's like live TV. I mean, it's, it's unique. Um, so I do my fishing thing and I decide, I was like, you know what? I'm going to take out. It's not going to be that hard. And, uh, I got caught up in the moment with all the other videos I shot. So I haven't really measured the distance. One place I say it's a half mile, I say it's a quarter of a mile, I say it's a hundred yards. I haven't measured it, I can't tell you. Um, it is probably closer to an eighth to a quarter of a mile where I had my booger problem, like the bad problem. But um, so as I'm floating down the river, I get, to, uh, I get to the head of the lake and it's shallow, it's really shallow. Like I said, the water's all going through one little spot there. I get there and that's the point where I decided maybe this is a bad idea because the boat gets stuck. 
And the boat gets hung up and I can see water flowing on both sides of me that looks deeper than where I'm at. But I'm like, I can't get over there because the bottom of the canoe is sitting on the bottom of the thing and it's on mud and it created a suction and like a vacuum and it's holding me still and I can't move. So I take my paddle, I separate it and I'm trying to push myself around but there's not enough substance to push from. See the leaves that settled there <clears throat> had a film of mud on top of it so it looks like mud but no, it's just a pile of leaves. And so when you push the paddle in, it goes two or three feet into the mud and it just shoves off. Um, I'm sorry that the, the contrast keeps brightening and darkening like that. I don't know if it's, um, I don't know. It just, I can't, I don't know how to change it. So y'all have to deal with me. Um, but, uh, so I, I tried to put my leg out of the canoe and push off with my leg, but again, nothing to push off with. So between pushing off with my leg and pushing off with the paddle, I was able to shift the canoe a little bit just to start floating. But that was the point where I was like, this may be a bad idea. What if I get farther down and it gets even shallower and I can't move at all? It's like, well, <clears throat> I tried to back up. There was no backing up. So at that point, I was 100% committed that I had to go to the lake to get out. And... um. I called my dad. I said, hey, you know, I'm coming down there, but hold up. <laughs> I thought it was going to take me 10 minutes to get there. Maybe not so much. <coughs> well, the city of Durham has been dredging the boat ramp at Lake Mickey. So with them dredging the boat ramp, I said, I, I went by and looked at it the other week. I was like, yeah, I can get in right there. I can come on down to where they're working at. They're working. They got equipment down there. If the equipment stands up on the ground, heck, I can stand up. It ain't a big deal. And uh, as I come down the hill, sorry, car's driving by. Um, as I come down the hill to get to get there, well, not the hill, but the river. As I come down the river and come under the bridge, I called my dad. I said, "Hey, I'm almost there. Come on down here and watch me." Well, I get down to the lake and uh, get to the lake, paddle on down. At the end of the lake, right there where they're working at, it does the same thing at the it did at the mouth of the little stream coming in. It got really shallow covered with leaves, leaves covered with silt. And at that point, I got kind of nervous because I couldn't stand up. I couldn't get out and I had to get out there to pull the boat up because there was no going back and there was nowhere on the bank because I was, I was thinking about it. I said, it might not be as nice as I thought it was. And uh, so I said, maybe I need to check this out. Maybe I have a backup plan. Anyhow, I get down to the end and the water takes a hard right and goes down a little terrace down into the next pool. Well, when it made that hard right, it was really narrow. Narrow meant hard because or else it would have just washed out and been wide like it was where I was at. So I get down there and I got out of the boat and I, could, I, I first got out, I was only sinking ankle deep. I said, well, this isn't gonna be so bad. Slid the boat up, took a step and went all the way up to my crotch. That's when I had a problem. So, I called my dad and told him to come on. I said, I didn't figure it'd take me about 10 minutes to get out. And I carried it up to the road and get out there. I know big, no harm, no foul. Well, in about 45 minutes, I reckon. And I about had a heart attack. So I pick up the boat. You'll see in the video. I pick up the boat, drag the boat, set it down. Pick it up, drag it, set it down. Pick it up, drag it, set it down. I had to do that. And I literally, I had to do that for over an eighth of a mile at least. It was at least the length of a football field. And I'm sure when the people come down here to do the construction work, they seen the tracks and said, there is a fool amongst us. I mean, they really, they, they, you could not see where I had been walking because there was this big drag slide. It looked like a beaver tail had been through there where I was pulling the canoe. But then there's all these footprints beside it where I had to lay over and flop and throw my legs. And like I said, it's a shame that there ain't no video of that because that was comical. But that's when I got worried because literally um, I've had COVID twice. And because I've had COVID twice, my lungs ain't the best in the world. And I'm out of shape. I'm fat. I mean, I pick and joke about it, but I am a big guy. Um, but when I come through there, I got winded. And when I got winded, I got lightheaded a couple of times. And I sat down and I drank some water and catch my breath. And then I'd go back at it again. I mean, you can't give up. I mean, what are you going to do? Um, but my dad calls. And he's like, he said, you okay? You ain't having a heart attack, are you? And that's when it, you know, kind of hit me. I was like, you know, I'm in my 40s. And I ain't in the best of shape. And what if I did have a heart attack out here? 
So when we talk about like epic fail, it's a pretty bad idea on my behalf because nobody could have got to me. Literally the only way I got out of there was because I was dragging the boat. I had something to sit on. If you took two, two of them bike brace boards that the fire department used and used one as, as a step and then pulled the other one up and set it down, sort of like you would snowshoes, you could have got around out there or the little plastic basket that looks like a sled. They, they, you could have got around on the mud. But unless somebody had enough common sense to do that, you won't walk into me. That won't go happen. Or else I could have walked out. Um, I've got enough rope, and I know enough folks that if, if it was a matter of issue of rope to pull the boat out, that would have never been an issue. Um, but the fact that I had to pull it when I, as I was going, that uh, that's what messed me up. And uh, I did. I got it out. I got to the bank. I left the boat. I was too tired. I left the boat. I got all my, I got what was expensive or irreplaceable out of it. Throwed it in the truck, went and got my pickup truck, came back down there after I had, like I said, I, I caught my breath while I was going to get the truck and all. And I come back and I had a little bit more energy and I come drug it up. But so this is day three or four since it happened. And I'm just now getting to the point where I can put all the video stuff and the pictures together to put it out here. But I hope you all see it and uh, learn from my mistakes. And, uh, you know, if you want to go fishing and you want to do something remote, go for it. Know what you're doing or take somebody with you that does. Um, I'm always down for an adventure. But um, just know that the reward and the risk, you know, they play. They play together. And so the higher the risk, you could have a higher reward or there could be a higher consequence. So um, that's about all I got for that. Watch the video. It ain't very long. It ain't very funny, but just some pictures to show you of what I went through. Um, and uh, like I said, if y'all got any questions, call me, message me, Instagram, Facebook, Messenger, However, I'll tell you what I know about where I know, and I'll tell you how to get where where you can get within reason. Um, I mean, I hate to blow out a fishing hole, but I really don't think after watching this video, I got to worry about too many people going where I went, because especially if I didn't catch what I was after. So, I um, hope you have a good time, have a happy New Year's, and uh, hope 2022 is better than 2021 was. And uh, see y'all on the water. Good morning, everybody. And so today I'm out on a river. It's almost dried up. And uh, one of the coolest things is seeing what's under the surface. When the water's down low, I'm actually still floating. Um, I'm in a canoe. And I'm easing down to what I know to be, in the past, has been a deep, big, long pool. Lots of water in it. And so I would say that the majority of the fish have been trapped in this pool. But there's only one way to find out, and that's to get there. So for the past hour and a half, I have been walking, dragging, carrying, portaging, kayaking, or canoeing gear down the river. And I was like, wow, I wish so-and-so could see this. This would be cool. They would understand what we're fishing and this, that, and the next thing. And then the reality comes is that not everybody is as invested um there's people that that love to go fishing and love to do things but when it comes to putting in the hard work mm, sometimes they're not so much so your success is a reflection of your effort i think that's a great way to put it so i'm gonna flip the camera and give you all a brief rundown so if you look right there, that line, that's the water line. As you go up the, man, it's just like nothing. You can see down in the bottom somewhat. But just imagine I would be um, over my head right now. Let's see, the bank's four and a half feet higher than the water line now. So gives you a, a brief example of what's going on.
some of y'all ain't gonna believe I did this <laughs> and others of you are gonna say it's par for the course in the world of not so good ideas I deserve a trophy I really do like I said not my smartest moment by far not my stupidest moment but shh, this is rough I thought there'd be more water flowing thought it'd be deeper and I can't walk over there I got hip waders on and it'd be to the top of it with mud I'd be stuck remember I said I hadn't quite made it out yet uh, we're hiking back to my truck now then we got to go get the boat the boat's still at the lake because I couldn't get the boat out because I would sink up past my knees. So we're going to tie a rope to the boat and a rope to that rope until I run out of ropes until we get to a place that I can pull from. And I hope that I can get a rope to a truck and pull the boat with the truck from way far away. So let's see how this process continues like I said earlier don't everybody deserve the same results because it ain't worth ugh, I ain't willing to put this effort in it's hard to explain but that's what I come down like you can see how shallow it is When I went to take out over there at the boathouse, it was so soft. Now to give you an example, can't zoom in in this mode. Oh, yes I can. See that bird track right there? That track's three inches deep. Them birds should pretty much float. If he's sinking three inches, imagine what the fat boy did. I had to drag the boat lean on the boat slide the boat forward pull my feet out then lay back on the boat again slide it pull it forward slide it pull it forward i had to do that for about 100 yards yep yeah, that was an adventure y'all
We would like to thank our sponsors for continuing to make these videos possible. Slime Line Fishing Line. With advanced innovation monofilament lines such as High Viz, Extra Clear, and Champion Series Super Stretch, providing a solution for your every need. Get Outdoors, your paddle sports destination with outstanding service before, during, and after the sale with all the latest in kayak fishing equipment and accessories. Wacom Stackham Baits, providing custom bait options with unlimited varieties of colors and sizes to meet your every need with the highest quality and soft plastic, offering many baits for multiple species of fish and various water conditions.